Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. We were just having a few technical difficulties there, so we're a little bit late. But I'd just like to welcome you all to tonight's SBTS TBTS webinar, Online Power, Getting the Most Out of Internet Solutions. My name's Gemma Wilkinson, and I'll be facilitating tonight's webinar, which is going to be presented by Christian Duff. Both, both Christian and myself are technical officers with SBTS. Tonight's webinar, Online Power, is the second in our series of webinars um, ahead of the curve webinar course. We'll be holding two more webinars in this webinar course in, on next Monday night and the Monday after. If you'd like to register for any, either of those webinars, you can go to the SPTS website and click on the webinars link and you should be able to register there. The Ahead of the Curve webinar series, the idea behind it was to uh, make a bull breeders more aware of some of the latest tools that have become available. The Internet Solutions definitely fits into that category because even though it's something that a lot of breeders and I'm sure a lot of you have used every day to look up animals and pedigrees, etc., there's been a few enhancements that have been done recently and also there's a few little tips and tricks we think that we can give you to make how you use internet solutions both most more time efficient and also uh, a lot more effective. So now that we've got through the housekeeping I'll hand over to Christian Duff to begin the webinar. Thank you Gemma and welcome everyone. Um, Gemma is just going to hand the presenting over to me now, so it'll just take a couple of seconds to show my screen, which should be coming up in front of you right now. Uh, basically tonight, as Gemma's already outlined, we'll be taking you through a presentation and showing you uh, internet solutions in the InSolution mobile app. What we are planning to cover here tonight is a range of things, but basically we just want to provide a general overview about what internet solutions is and what facilities it has available, um, particularly to Breed Society members. We're going to outline how Internet Solutions can be used effectively and efficiently when focusing on animal searches. Um, Internet Solutions does a lot of things, but we're really going to focus on that animal search function tonight. We're also going to introduce you along the way to several new developments that have been implemented in Internet Solutions. It's not something that's been, it's actually been around for some time, but um, something we keep building into to make it more functional and, and making sure it's uh, good for cattle breeders. And we're going to finish up by showing the functionality of Internet Solutions mobile application, which is a fairly new thing released earlier this year, um, to make sure you know how you can use that, um, access and use that facility. So that's what we're planning to do tonight. Uh, I will say that um, I'm going to be showing a lot of live examples on the internet. So I've got a couple of slides here on PowerPoint, but we're going to be going live on the internet to show you the system. I'm going to be using the Hereford system as the example tonight, but uh, basically all the things basically apply crossbreed. Um, saying that, if there's any real breed specific stuff that you want us to look at at some stage in this presentation, then send a question to Gemma, um, she'll moderate it and we can maybe bring it in at the end of the presentation and look at some more, more breed specific stuff. But um, I'm only using Hereford because uh, they've got a range of information displayed and, and it's obviously applicable across breed as well, how the functionality works. Okay, so just to provide a bit of an overview on internet solutions and what it is, uh, if you're not quite sure, internet solutions is just the word it's used to uh, basically for a web-based technology developed by our company here called the Agricultural Business Research Institute. And basically it's a, it's a technology that's offered to breed societies and other organisations, particularly livestock organisations that are, that are clients of ours. Um, what it does and primarily does is it basically just provides access to information over the internet to breed society pedigree and performance database systems. So that's mainly just to what display information so you can really easily access it and search and sort it, but also in some regards so you can interact with it and do registrations and things. Um, we're going to focus tonight on the, the inquiry side of it, though, looking at the information. Uh, so the main, the main facilities that uh, we have in front of us um, in regards to this, this technology and, and the services offered, as I've got listed there on the screen, we've got animals, animal and EVV inquiry, and we're going to be focusing on that tonight. We've got member inquiries, we've got sale catalogues, we've got semen catalogues, we've got mating predictors, we've got secure member logins and being able to download files, online transactions like registrations and, and customised display. Um, but, so the main thing we're going to be focusing on tonight is the animal EVV inquiry, the member inquiry, looking at sale catalogues, a little bit about the mating predictor, 
and, and also if you log in what benefits you get as a member because uh, you do get a lot of additional benefits if you actually log in rather than just using the open system uh, which most of you are probably used to, to looking at. Um, that's where we're going in that regards. I just want to talk about um, how wide this system is used because it's not just one breed, it's actually a system that we offer to all our livestock organisations and breed society clients worldwide. There's currently 148 livestock related organisations um, using this technology. Um, that includes mainly beef breeds but and, and beef, beef breed societies but also um, things like uh, stock horses and uh, and pony horse associations, um, alpacas, and so on. So it's not just not just a um, a beef technology. It's used for a range of livestock livestock uh, organisations. Um, but it does, as it says on the screen, there include 110 beef breed societies and organisations around the world. Now, what that graph is showing you is the number of transactions we get per month um, on this technology. So this is across all our systems. So basically it's showing the start of the technology in July in, in 2000 basically um, and you can see the amazing growth of this technology and people accessing information through this technology over time. Um, this is basically the, the last bar in that graph would be January 2013, that's where we're up to with the stats. Um, and as you can see we're getting about, in more recent times, in the, in the bigger months we're getting about three, between 3 and 3.5 million page hits for the month. Um, so that's, that's the transactions of information people looking at but also doing registrations and so on. Um, just to put it in context, I guess you would say um, some of our, our biggest um, user of this technology is, is American Herefords. Um, they have about 400, uh, they have about 400 transactions a month um, in their bigger months. Um, Angus Australia, which is also a big user, has about 200,000. Brahmins, Limousins, etc. has about 100,000. Um, some of our horse associations like Stock horse have about 200,000, so uh, you know it, it's getting used quite widely across a range of breeds and, and across a range of countries. So it's been used a lot, but I think it can be used more. To be honest, uh, I think more people can access it and find good information. So how do you actually access internet solutions? Uh, there's two ways you can go around it. Um, the first way would be to basically go to your breed society uh, website, and most breed societies now have this technology, and they'll have on there somewhere something like they probably won't call it internet solutions, they'll call it um, animal search or member search or EBV search or something along those lines or database facility or something like that. So you just need to uh, click on that and it'll take you through to this, the facility we'll show tonight using the Hereford example. The one I've got on the screen there is obviously Angus showing you how they've got listed on their website. Um, the other way you can go to it is through the BreedPen website and we've, obviously, we've got all of our breeds listed um, all of our beef breeds anyway that the clients of maybe are on breed plan listed here. Um, obviously not our other livestock like horses and things but uh, our beef breed societies. I'm actually going to go through that, that facility um, now and show you how it's utilised. As I've said, we are going to be using the Hereford example tonight and that's for no reason other than you need to pick a breed to, to show you um, but the functionality that I'll show you not to, doesn't just apply in Herefords, it applies across the board. So if your breed's got internet solutions um, then the same search and sort facilities and functions will work. Um, again, if you're interested to me to bring up anything really breed specific later in this presentation, then let me know and, uh, and we can bring it up later on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to briefly get out of PowerPoint and I'm going to jump onto the internet and I'm going to bring up the breed plan website. So here in front of me, you should be seeing now, is the breed plan website. Um, and across the top here, where you access internet solutions uh, for a range of breeds is the database search title here. So if we just click on that, what that'll do is take us through to the database search and bring up the range of breeds that have that. So if we just scroll down, you can basically see that the top ones are all the Australian breed societies. Um, then we've got the New Zealand's, United United States of America, Canada, South Africa, Namibia, and so on. So, as you can see here, it's technology that's used a lot of time um, and, and in a lot of areas, um, in a lot of breed societies. So, today, as I said, we're going to be looking at Herefords. So, Herefords is just down the bottom here. So, if we just click on the Herefords Australia, what that'll do is take us through to their animal and EBV search facility. Now, some of this uh, information I'm going to show you initially some of you might be used to, but I think uh, it's pretty important we just we just start from scratch and just show everyone how to use this effectively. Um, what's this Hereford? Uh, first of all, across the top we have all the options available in this internet solutions for Hereford. So we've got animal inquiry, 
we've got EBV inquiry, which we're going through now. Basically, that's a, just an expanded function of the animal inquiry, uh, which allows you to do not just the normal animal searches and things, but allows you to build in the EBV side of it. Uh, we've got a matey predictor, which I'll show you later on. We've got a member inquiry. We've got sale catalogs. We've got seeming catalogs. We've got um, download files and online transactions. That's where you need to log in as a member, which I'll show you later on as well. Um, and then down here, we've got a, a range of of information uh, where we can select to try and find and search and sort for animals. Uh, what I'll say initially is the less information you put in, the more success you're going to have initially to find animals. Um, one common mistake is people go in and try and fill a thousand things in and they might get a little bit of information wrong or make their, make their searches a bit too, uh, a bit too um, um, tight and therefore they don't find animals. So keep your searches pretty broad. Um, what I'm going to do first of all though is just bring up a, an animal just to show you find one animal if you know it. The bull's name is Varuna Fort F382, so I'll just type his name in, Varuna Fort F382, but if we just click on search, it'll then go and look through the breed society system um, and find that animal. So what it's brought up there is it's brought up uh, the animal's particular name, uh, it's got his little camera there saying he's got a photo if you go to another screen and then it's got all his breeding values across there with his, with his accuracies and his index at the other end and then we've got the breed average values here. So anything that's blue and underlines a link so it'll take you, more, uh, take you through to further information. So if we just click on that animal's name, what that'll do is then just bring up that animal's particular details. So we can see here We've got a range of information that's stored on the Breed Society system that's now accessible to everyone. I should say this isn't a direct link into the Breed Society system. What, what we do is we actually, once a week, generally, uh, we copy uh, the required information from the Breed Society central pedigree system onto our internet solutions database just to keep it slightly separate for security reasons. Um, but this is what the information is displayed. So basically here we've got the animal's ID, sex, tattoo, date of birth, etc., etc. We've got some sire and dam details. Again, if you wanted to know more about this particular guy's sire or dam, you just click on one of those. Uh, we also got some information on his, his, who his current owner is. Again, if you got to the detail and you thought, oh, I don't mind this sire, I wouldn't mind getting in touch with this particular owner, then you can click on that. This one's mildly owned. You can see it's owned by Varuna and Tarkham. Um, again, if you're interested to, to contact that particular breed, you click on the link and it takes you through to all these contact details um, as displayed on the Breed Society system. So we'll just go back now to uh, the particular bull. Uh, what else we have here is, you can see he's actually a sire, he's got 22 progeny. Um, and if you click on that particular link, it'll take you through and it'll show you all his progeny, starting with the first 15 um, out of 22. If you want to see the next ones, you just go next. Uh, if you want to see the UVs, you go show all EBVs up here. So there's a range of things you can do there on a functionality point of view. Uh, also, if you wanted to look at the animal's pedigree, you can click here and click pedigree. And this, will, if you scroll down, will now show the animal's pedigree. It's about three generations, I think, maybe four. Uh, and again, you can click on any of these animals and it'll take you through to further pedigree. So it allows you to go back in time if that's what you want to do and, and really inter interrogate that pedigree. Um, so if we just go back now to the previous screen, the other option um, we got here, before I go on to the EBV graph, I might just explain what we've got in the EBV table. We've also got the animal's reportable EBVs and his accuracies. Um, down the bottom here, we've also got what traits observed for this animal. So you can see here, this particular bull has himself been measured for birth weight, 200 day weight, 400 day weight, scrotal size, fat, eye muscle area and IMF. Um, and statistics, he's also been used in one herd, which is obviously Varuna from his progeny we saw and he's got 22 progeny analyzed. So he's a young sire coming, coming into it. And that's no surprise given the age. I think he was a 2010 drop bull. Uh, and down the bottom of that, we have these selection indexes as such. So they're all displayed there for you to, to look at from a genetic merit perspective. Uh, this particular bull here also has a picture and he's also in a SEMA catalog. So if you click that, it'll take you through to that catalog as such. Um, what I also want to show you is this EBV graph. So the EBV graph, what it will show you is the animal's EBV on a percentile ranking basis. So when that comes up, you can see down the middle here is basically the 50th percentile, or you could, I suppose it's equivalent to breed average in a way. Um, we've got the traits listed down the side here, 
And then we've got what side of the trait you would go. So you can see this guy for carving. He's generally speaking, if the trait's over on the on the right hand side, it's more preferable for the trait. However, there's some traits that could go either way depending on your production system, like fat or like uh, um, mature cow, and those sorts of things. So so it really does depend on what you want to do. But most of the traits, if it's over on this side, over on the right hand side, it's preferable. Um, so you can see here, this particular bull's uh, pretty good for a lot of traits, and you can see he's ranked really highly for his indexes. Um, so that's an index point of view. So you can see for carving ease direct, he's in the top 5% easily of the breed for carving ease direct. For his dollar indexes, he's in the top 1% of the breed when you put all those traits together. Um, what you can then do is there's actually a new, very new graph built into this, which is an add-on to this EBV graph. If you can see down here, this is a very new, new graph built in. Um, I should say some of these features are only available to some breeds. Some breeds have, have taken them on at this stage, some breeds haven't. So if you're a breed who haven't got access to this new graph, then um, probably talk to your breed association or talk to us directly. We can, we can um, tell you what's happening from there. Um, Hereford Zoo have this new graph, which is called the Stero er Standard Error Graph. And if we go switch graph, what it does is bring up this new graph format. And what this graph is basically doing is as we know, if we've got a breeding value, it's an estimate of, an estimate of an animal's breeding value, and we know there's some spread around that breeding value depending on the accuracy. EBVs that have higher accuracy, the EBVs, the EBVs are more likely to be a good estimate of the true breeding value. If it's a lower accuracy, then there's chances are there's more, more opportunity for the EBV to change as we find out more information. So you can see here a good example of this is this animal's birth weight EBV to interpret it is 87% accuracy, you can see the breed average is plus 4.4 in the middle there. This animal is plus 1.3, so he's on the lighter end. But because he's quite high accuracy, the standard error bar or the bar is quite narrow. So therefore, we're very close to this guy's true breeding value. There's still an opportunity to move either side of that, but uh, we're basically close to it. If you look at days to calving, we're sitting on 39% accuracy. So this bull still is above the breed average, so he's on the better side of breed average for days to calving, being on the negative side, shorter days to calving. But um, if you look at what he, where his EBV could stretch to, could actually stretch from um, uh, above, well above breed average to below breed average in some regards, but only slightly below. So, so it gives you an idea of where the spread in the EBVs could be, because again, we're dealing with estimates, not, not true breeding values when we're looking at estimated breeding values. Um, for those a bit more statistically minded, this bar also represents um, one standard error, which is basically 67% chance of the true breeding value lying in that range. That's how we interpret it. And the graph, the um, axis down the bottom here is basically just saying what's, what we're looking at on a spread point of view, and we're looking at a standard deviation. The reason we're doing that is so we can have all the different traits on the same graph, it's a genetic standard deviation, um, without getting too technical, of course. So that's the standard error graph, and that's something pretty new for, for most of you, I'm sure, um, but something that's out there as an additional thing for, uh, for internet solutions. So now I'll just go back. So what we've done is we actually looked through that animal's details in that animal's information, so it shows you what information is available. But where Internet Solutions is really powerful is not just looking for one animal here and there, but actually doing searches for a range of animals that meet your selection criteria, I guess you would say. So if we go back to the EBV inquiry, um, we start fresh with a, with a clean inquiry here. Um, if we now go through, and what I want to do is just do a search and sort. So in the Hereford system, I'm actually going to search for 2011 drop animals. So I'll put 2011 in calving year. I want to look at bulls, so I'm thinking I want to look at bulls for the upcoming sales. I'm looking at rising two-year-olds, I'm looking at males, and I'm also going to just do a simple sort. So I'll go down the bottom here, don't worry about all these other things. I'm going to do a simple sort down the bottom here by index. And I'm going to say the grain-fed steer index suits me, um, I know about it, and that, that's what suits my production system. So if we just click on search, and let that roll, then that'll take a little bit of time and it'll bring up now a list of animals born in 2011 in Herefords, they're male and they're sorted by index from highest to lowest the grain fed steer index. What's also uh, relevant is it's brought up the first 15 animals but now it'll actually retrieve 2,000 animals at a time. We used to have it set up so it only used to retrieve about you know 300 animals maximum but now we've actually expanded that because we've got new technology driving this it's a lot quicker um, we can actually able to, to present much more information and, and expand those animal lists and people are using that quite readily to do big sorts and then really, really hone it in when necessary. Um, so that's a, that's a new functionality as well, allowing us to search for 2,000 animals at a time in the list. Um, so 
what we have there, you can see we've sorted animals in that, but I might say, okay, 2,000 animals are too many to look at. I want to hone my search in a bit further. So I go back to my search facility, and I say, I'm going to put in some criteria to really hone in my search on a uh, EBV point of view. So I'm already sorting on the grain, grain fed index for, for Herefords, but I also don't want animals that are above breed average for calving ease direct. So I might say, I'm going to join this bull to heifers. So I want animals that are, um, say, above zero. I also want to only look at animals that are above breed average for yielding weight, because I'm turning off feeder steers as well, and, and weight at that stage is important. And also got some feedback from my feedlot that I need a bit more nick on the cattle, and I'm, I'm also interested in fatting my cow herd, because um, I'm keeping with some placement daughters. So I'm going to put some positive fat in there as well. So above the breed average of 0 0.2, say for, uh, actually we'll go for, um, rub fat. So I'll put those in, additional with our other criteria, and we can do a search and see what it comes up with. So initially it brought back 2,000 animals. We have now, it's taken a little bit longer time to search and sort because it's a, it's a bit more of an in-depth query, I guess you would say, but we'll just give it some time and uh, that'll, that'll bring us our results in uh, very shortly. But again, the criteria you put in there, what I put in there may not be relevant to you. It really depends on what you want. But uh, that's just an example I'm showing you um, about how you can use the facility to bring up those results. So hopefully we get some uh, results here in a second. I'm sure I didn't make it that difficult. So we'll just let that uh, let that whir away for a minute. Um, sometimes the search is depending on how busy the system is. It takes a little while. So you can see there with those criteria built in. And one thing I will say, if you're wondering what your selection criteria was, it is basically highlighted up the top there. You can see there, 2011 calving year male calving is direct, uh, 400 day weight, 44 rump fat, 0.2, etc. Um, so you can see here we had 2,000 originally. We've now brought back the list to 495 animals. So it's still a fairly big list, but it's brought it back. Um, we might say we're going to bring that back further. Let's put a bit more criteria in there. So again, back to the main list. Another new thing we've actually built into the search criteria is this herd completeness of performance rating. And this is something that's not available to all breeds. Some breeds have decided to take this on and some haven't. Herefords obviously have. Um, and, and the herd completeness of performance basically will say, um, I want to search for animals that have a herd with a particular completeness of rating score. And completeness of, ra completeness of performance rating is basically a rating system based on how much performance information, the, qual the quantity of information that's been collected in that herd across the range of traits important for that particular breed. So I might say, I want a herd four stars or greater. I want a herd that's recording a lot of information. If you're wondering what the star ratings mean, then you can click on the herd completeness link there and I'll take you through an explanation. But in this scenario, I'll say, okay, I want to use all those selection criteria already put in, but I also want to go to herds that are recording a lot of information as well. So I'll put that in and go search and see what we come back with. So I think we're at about 495 originally. What do we come back to now? We're back to now 309 animals. So you can see there, we've still got a lot of animals that meet those criteria that are from well-recorded herds. So that's, that's, a, that's a good outcome, and hopefully you've learned a few things there from that search and sort facility. One of the also the new things that have been built into Inet Solutions very recently is these headings up the top, which now allows you to search and, um, or sort on a particular heading. So even though in this, when we did this search, we, we sorted on the grain fed index, um, you might say, okay, I actually want to now rank them on eye muscle area, just to see, because I'm really interested in that trait and I really want to see which ones come up at the top. So if you just click on that, what I'll do is do it in descending order, um, ascending order to start with, but you probably want it in descending, so you click it again. And you can see here, it's now brought up those animals that are in, meet the search criteria in the 309, but it's sorted them on a particular eye muscle area trait. Again, you can pick whichever traits of interest to you, but that allows you to fo maybe focus on some traits you didn't put in your original criteria. And that's a new function that, that we have available. So that's just really, um, uh, showing you some, some functionality as such on how we use this particular system. Um, another thing I wanted to show you quickly is um, uh, how we use the sale catalogs as such. Uh, sale catalogs is pretty important, so if you just click on the sale catalogs functionality, um, you can see herbin has got a range of sale catalogs because they're coming up into their spring, uh, winter and spring sales. Uh, if we go down, you can see we've got a range here. If you want interested in a particular sale, 
say Yalgu, this particular sale, I'm going to be using this a couple of times tonight. You can click on that link and basically it'll just bring up those sales. Again, to show all the EBVs and so on, you can click on show all EBVs and that'll bring up those EBVs for those animals. And the beauty of it is you can actually do a search and sort. So if you just want to search and sort on that catalogue rather than across the whole database, you can click on that and basically it brings up the same screen as you've seen and you've been using for your search and sorts previously. So that's really uh, good functionality that allows you just to hone that sale. Um, so you can do that on a search and sort point of view if you wanted to search through, sort through the algae catalog based on the grain fed index, for example. Um, another powerful functionality which has been there for some time, but I think I might point out, if we go back to the EBV inquiry or the animal inquiry, but we'll, the EBV inquiry we'll, uh, we'll just talk about for now. Um, if you're also interested in searching across all the sale catalogs, so just not one, then you can actually just click on currently listed for sale. Um, that's where it's listed in Hereford. For some other breeds, you might actually have to go to this drop down and select if, and it says animal is for sale. That just means the animal's been listed for sale, so you know it's available for offer. So you can do that and then do your search and sorts uh, and really hang in on those animals that have, uh, that have been put up for sale. So Gemma, um, I might uh, actually hand back over to you now just to see if we've got any questions. Uh, I think I've taken people through enough of the functionality side of things for now before we move on to the, uh, a few other areas of internet solutions. So happy to take any questions if we've got them. Okay, yeah, Christian, we've got um, a few questions. Firstly, um, is internet solutions available for all Australian cattle breeds and is there any differences in the way that the internet solutions is presented for different breeds? Uh, yeah, basically internet solutions is available primarily for all, all cattle breed societies that I'm aware of. Uh, I can't think of one, maybe some of the really small niche ones may not have it, but all the main big breed societies um, down to quite a, some of the smaller ones have internet solutions. Um, so it would surprise me if there's too many breeds that aren't on the ABRI pedigree platforms that don't have internet solutions operating. Um, in regards to the information that's displayed, obviously the, the technology that drives internet solutions is the same across breeds, but what specific information is displayed, it's quite consistent, but there will be some um, uh, variations depending on what information the breed society wants to show and what they, what they want to give access to. So there will be some differences across of, across systems, but they should be still fairly similar because as I said, if you can use the Hereford system I'm showing you tonight, you should be able to also use um, the Anger system or the Brahman system, for example. Okay. Thanks, um, just one more question if we've got time. Uh, why is the breed average EBV for, uh, that we've showed up earlier in the percentile bands, etc., why is the breed average for 2011 drop calves and does this get updated each year? Uh, yeah, good, good breed plan question. Slightly off topic, but I'm happy to answer it. Um, basically, the breed average is calculated um, as animals at two year basically the animals that are two year old from the current year. So and the reason we use two year old animals as our breed average is because they're the most current current crop of calves um, that have the range of performance recorded, our two year olds, and they're also the animals we're generally selecting from. You could probably argue whether that's right these days using yearling bulls and so on, but the rising two year olds is generally that population. So so we use in two thousand thirteen we use the two thousand eleven drop calves. When we roll over to two thousand fourteen we'll actually update the breed average to the two thousand twelve drop calves. So it is updated year on year and that's where we pick up our genetic trend as well so we know that things are changing. And you also want to be comparing your animals not to the um, old old calf drops, you want to be comparing to the current genetic calf drop, particularly with the amount of genetic progress breeds have made over the years. Okay, I think Thanks, that's Gemma. it for questions for now. Okay, not a problem. We move on to the next part of this presentation for time. Um, Basically, what I'm going to do now is showing you how you use internet solutions and the benefits of logging in. Um, as you can see on the screen in front of you, uh, basically there's a, a range of benefits from logging in. Um, basically, the thing I'm going to show you tonight is how you can, use, when you log in, how you can customise the display of your search results. I'm going to show you, you, your, you can access your female inventory list um, if you log in, which you can't do in the open system. Uh, you can also do online transactions. I'm not actually going to show you how to do that, but no, you can do it. My, most breeds offer registrations and performance missions. It also offers a access file download area where you can get a range of files, file downloads if, if they're applicable to you. And another important thing to think about this internet solutions and logging in, if you log in, you actually get unlimited transactions. If you're using the open system, so you just go on the breed website website and click animal search, 
Um, it'll actually probably log you out. If you use it a lot and you're doing a lot of searching, say, before a sale and you're doing a lot of clicks, um, then the system will lock you out for a period because that's a security measure. It doesn't want people coming in and scrolling through the information and stealing it, mainly programs. Um, but if you log in, you can actually have unlimited transactions. Um, so we encourage you to do that, obviously. Um, if you don't have access details to log in, then you need to contact your breed society and they will provide you access details if you don't have them already. And I don't think any, any breed society I know charge for it, so it's a free facility. So I encourage you, if you don't have access to this, then talk to a breed association, um, your breed association, and they'll, they'll give you the details to log in. So I'm now going to go back out to the internet and just show you some of the functionality. Uh, you can see, uh, if I go up now to the Hereford sign-in, and basically, this is the sign-in field, and I'm just going to log in as, as a specific member here. It doesn't really matter who it is. Um, this is just showing you an example, and they've got a password set up. I'll just type in, click. So basically, you can see we've logged in, and this is for a, a Hereford stud called Yalgu Partnership. It's named up the top, and you can see their society ID over here. Um, B0381, and it's given us a few other things that we wouldn't see in the open system. Uh, one thing it does allow us to do is if you do an animal inquiry, or say an EBV inquiry, it gives us this functionality here now to select animals in the ownership of this herd or in your female inventory. Um, if I click on my female inventory, for example, and go search and just bring up those animals, what that'll do is that'll go through and just find the animals on the female inventory for Yalgu. And you can see up the top here, it's brought up 265 animals. And that's useful. If you're doing some searching and sorting and making some mating decisions, you can bring up just the animals on your female inventory. Obviously, this is only applicable to breed societies that have an inventory-based um, system. Not all breed societies have those. A lot of our southern-based breeds, British breeds, Euro breeds have them. A lot of our northern breeds don't have them as such. Uh, so that's our, uh, that's our uh, functionality it's got. Um, what it also allows us to do, um, is use mating predictor, and I'll just show this very quickly uh, for time, but as you can see here in the mating predictor, in the login version, we have the my female inventory perspective. So if we do that for this herd and we put in a couple of sires, there's two sires here I want to look at. Um, basically one is, we've already looked at WNA F382, he's at Hereford bull we brought up before, put a comma, we put another bull, DAY G. 74. Um, if we go down here, we've got females in the inventory selected, so that'll do for our females. So we'll look at the first 50. You can select up to 200. That's new actually to be able to do 200 at a time. Uh, that's a new function. I'll actually, I'll actually sort or display results by dam. So I'll go by dam by dam and see what the outcomes is joined to one of, one of these two sires. If I click on search, that'll actually go through now and do our mating predictor. So that might just take a little bit of time to whir away, but uh, it'll then return some results to us. And again, it allows you to access your female inventory if you log in, uh, which is which is a very useful, uh, very useful thing. Oh, that's uh, that's a good thing to, to happen. An internal error occurred. We might uh, just come back to that at some other stage. It did work this afternoon, I promise. Um, so that that's a function that uh, I encourage you to give a go, though, um, to to access your female inventory. Um, what else we can access as such through here is if we go back to this information page which is our introductory page. Uh, if we click on uh, modify membership details, which is a link, what this allows you to do, if you actually change your email address or your postal address or your phone numbers and things, uh, what you can do is actually type in your new details here and submit those and they'll actually send an email through your breed society who then can update that information. So that just allows you to up, keep your information up to date as possible. Uh, back to that information page. What we can also do is modify report layouts. So this is a, it's a fairly new one you probably haven't seen or maybe have seen, but it's uh, something you haven't accessed previously or, or utilised a lot. But basically this allows you to modify what you see. So for example, if I just pick on animal listing and EBV graph, so this is only be customised for what you see. Uh, if I say, okay, in my list I want to see just the identifier, I want to see the sex, I want to see the birth date, I want to see the sire, I want to see the uh, carving is direct. I want to see traits observed. Now, 
why I've done this is what happens if you actually go through, and why I'm doing it 10, 20, 30, 40, if I put in 50 there, um, and say I got to the end of the end, instead of me having to go back and rerun all these numbers, if I just want to put traits observed now in it before that, I can just put in 45. That just means it comes in order. So I'll put traits observed, which I'll explain in a second. That's a new function. Carving is direct. We'll say let's put in 400 day weight, eye muscle area, and rump fat, and the grain fed steer index, 90. Okay, so, and likewise, if we want the EBV graph to sort of replicate that, you can do the same thing. So we'll say we want the carving ease direct, we want the 400 day weight, we want eye muscle area, we want rub fat, we want the grain fit index. And if you just go down here now and go update, that'll now update the system. So if we do an animal EBV inquiry, um, or just an animal inquiry, an EBV query, the function, the search we do, if we go and look at those 2011 drop uh, males, 2011 drop males, sorted by grain fed index, go search, what that'll do now is go through and find that group of animals, but it'll display it, just the information we want. So as you can see here, it's got the animal's identifier, it's got the sex, the date of birth, it's got the sire which we can link to. This is the new function that we've built in, so you can click on traits observed, so you can see what the animals have got recorded. So you can see these top animals have got gestation length, the birth weight, 200, 400, it's got two of those, scrotal size, fat, side muscle areas, and intramuscular fat, and then we just have the EBV display that we want to see as well. So again, that's it, customising it to view what we want to view. Uh, so that's the uh, customised facilities, it's got some good functionality there and I encourage you to all log in and do your searching and sorting to, to have access to that functionality. Okay Gemma, um, I'm now just going to hand back to see if there's any questions before we finish off with our last section which is on uh, the In Solutions app. Um, we have got one question which is probably a little bit off topic, but uh, how many dams can you type in manually into mating predictor at the moment? And also if you were looking at uh, looking up multiple dams, say in the EBV search inquiry, how would you do that? Right. Um, multiple animals. It's a, it's a good question. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. There will be some uh, limitation on how many you can type in. To that, to that field if you're just typing in uh, the DM as such. I'll just go back and show you so you know what we were referring to. So if we go mating predictor, you can see this DM identifier. There will be a limit here, so you, you might be able to only type in a dozen or, or, or at most, I suspect. Um, so that's where it's good to use your my, my ownership option or your my female inventory option, um, if, if that's available to you, which should have all your females available. Sometimes you can just do my ownership um, if you don't have a female inventory set up for a breed, and you can just you just have to flick through your females as such. So uh, just give that a go. Uh, if you've got more specific questions, make sure you contact one of us, and we we'll maybe talk you through it uh, in more detail for your specific situation. Okay, Christian, how would a how how would a member set up their member login area? Okay, um, to actually access your member login. So if you don't have login details at this stage. What you need to do is contact your breed association. So, if you're a Hereford member, get in touch with Hereford Australia and say, I want, I want to access uh, my login via Internet Solutions and the member login facility, and they will provide you with a username, which will basically be your herd ID and a password, and then you can access it and customise it as you need to. So that's that's how you need to uh, go down that path. Contact your breed association and get it set up. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, I just wanted to move on now for time-wise, um, and I want to finish off this presentation by looking at the new app which we've released earlier this year, and it's something I'm, um, uh, I would say, excited about. Well, I am a bit excited. It's um, one of those new technologies which I think uh, uh, has got a lot of functionality and people are going to use a lot going forward. We just know how many people have got smartphones and iPads these days and tablets, so uh, it's, it's a technology that really allows you to access through those, fa those facilities, as it says there. It's basically internet solutions, the same information or similar information that's displayed on internet solutions, but it's with a mobile phone, mobile device interface, and primarily set up for smartphones, but also tablets. Uh, it was developed um, 
primarily to view information with an emphasis on sale catalogs. So we didn't set up this stage of the the um, uh, in Solutions app to record information and for, for breed society members to submit stuff to breed societies. It's basically set up to view information that's already recorded to breed societies, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, you can basically download this app from the App Store if you're with Apple, um, you have an iPhone or an iPad, or Google Play, Android, um, and basically it's a dollar ninety nine. So it's a fairly cheap cross, and basically that gives you access not just to your own breed, but you can actually access multiple breeds, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and some breeds have also used this platform to develop their own breed specific apps such as Angus Australia. And I think Angus Australia actually offers, offer their app for free, but it's basically based on this technology, the InSolution app platform. So what I want to do now is actually want to show you the InSolutions app. Um, to do that, I'm actually going to use some technology which emulates my iPad up on the screen. So if you, you just bear with me for a second, you'll be able to hopefully see the app, which you can see there now. Um, so what we can see is we can basically see uh, the uh, my particular iPad and the Hereford system I have have available. Um, if you're actually interested to see um, other breeds now, when you when you actually download this app, what it'll do is give you an option to to look at a range of breeds. And you actually go and if you're interested in both Herefords and Sanders and Angus, you can actually have those databases back um, situated there. You can access. And to do that, if you just go through settings down the bottom, uh, which I'll just highlight there, but I've got to click on my iPad in front of me. So basically, what this does is it'll then go and look at the settings as such. Sorry about the slight flicker in the screen. It's just my access to the um, the iPad. So you can see here, I've actually tick the boxes for Angus Australia, Australian Braff, and Australian Brown Breed, Australian Brangus, and so on. But I've actually selected the Hereford one to look at this stage. Um, down the bottom here, we also have the options to how many results you want to see per page. So if you actually want to see, say, more than 15, you want to see 100 results, then you can do that. Saying that, the more you select, the slower the download and the, t and the response time will be. So 15 is not a bad number, I've found. Uh, what we also have is we also have a advanced animal search for the function there. So I've got that ticked. I think that will initially become unticked um, if, you, if you download the app. What that allows you to do is when you're doing just an animal lookup, it allows you to also build in some EBV search criteria as well. If you have that unticked, it just says, okay, you can search on sex and name and ident, for example. Um, so let's now just go back briefly. So if I just go to continue, and that will take me back to uh, the, the previous screen. Um, and you can see here from this stream, if you want to say, change the database, I've selected Hereford, but if you want to change to Braford or Brangus or Angus, you can do that. But I'm basically just going to stick on Hereford, and that'll take me through now and look at the Hereford system as such. So you can see here I've got Herefords up in front of me. Um, so what we can see there is we can see the um, sale catalogs, semen catalogs, member, member lookup, animal ident, and so on and so forth. So just to as I said, this was initially set up to view information, so really focusing around sale catalogs. And basically, it'll just display the same information that we have on Internet Solutions. Uh, so if we click on that, it'll now bring up the uh, sale catalogs as such. And you can see here, we've basically got the range of sale catalogs listed um, that we had on Internet Solutions that we looked online previously. So I'm just going to scroll now down and have a look at, I must apologise, the screen's been flicking a bit, but um, just the technology linking into my computer. Um, I'm going to look at the Yalgu sale, so if we again click on that, basically what that does is bring up the Yalgu sale catalogues, um, and from this screen you can actually just go through and click on each animal and look at their details, or if you want to look at my, um, if you want to um, um, look at an individual animal, you obviously just need to click on it. Uh, from here, if I just click on that top animal, what it'll do is actually bring up what information you can see, and it'll bring up concertina. So you can see here I've got animal details showing, I've got pedigree showing, I've got the EBV percentile graph showing, and that's it for now. What what this app does actually remembers what you viewed last time from the previous animal. So say you um, didn't want to use, view the pedigree, if you just close that down, um, you can actually then go down and you say, okay, I want to actually see the, the vendor's comments. So you click on that to open it up, and it opens it up. Then when you go to the next animal, so if we then go up here, you can see we're at lot number one. Up the top here, we've got two little buttons. If we just go to the next animal now, 
what that does is go on to the last animal, so I should have clicked the previous one. So that's lot one, which has gone to lot two. And as you can see, it remembers what screen you've got open as such. So that's just retrieving our data there now. And you can see there we've gone to lot two, the ugly lexicon. Now what you can do, what's a really nice function in this app, is you can actually uh, go through and you can see the My Favourites up the top. If you want to, if you want to click on the animal saying, yeah, I'm really interested in this bull. He's got all the information I want. I've looked at him in the pen before the sale. He looks he looks the right package. His feet are typically good. You can actually just click on that My Favourite up the top, and you might give him three three stars, for example, and you'll see that they'll highlight in, level, in yellow. Um, if you're only sort of interested, you might just give him one star. If you're not interested, you mightn't give him any. So what happens then is if we then go back to the um, particular list, then you can see there, by clicking this little arrow up here, it's bringing us back to the list. If we go back to there, you can then see that the animal's highlighted as a favourite. Um, so if we go through all the bulls, we can then go through and actually um, highlight the ones we see as favourites or not. And then when we're through that process, we can actually go to the My Favourites, and in that particular um, in that particular lot that animal should be coming up, which he hasn't. Actually, it's still just processing, so we'll just leave that were away for a little bit. Okay, so if we then select another animal, for example, I should say you can also add favourites from here. So you can see here I've clicked on that golly gosh and given him three stars as well. Again, if we click on my favourites, it's taken us through, and we've actually just got those two bulls listed in my favourites now that you might want to focus on. And you can actually sort that list by lot number. So if the bulls are coming in in a normal auction procedure, you've got them in lot number, or we can sort them on star order, for example, just by doing a sort as such, um, as in the drop down there. Okay. So what we also have um, in this facility, we've also got a search and sort functionality. So say you actually, down the bottom, you want to go through and you actually want to s sort and search that full um, Yalgoo database, just like Internet Solutions with the same function, you have to add the traits. So, so up the top here, you just hit the little button, and you might say, again, we want carving ease direct, we want greater than zero, uh, we want 400 day wait. If we go down the trait, you can see here that it's actually given us 400 day wait, and the minimum, we'll say above breed average of 44, um, and we will close that down, and then we go find. and my internet solution is just uh, worn out. So I must apologise for that. Uh, it's now coming up to the top and bringing out some other information. So basically, uh, I must apologise, the, the system just shut down on us briefly. Um, I should say it doesn't do this, I'm just connected up a thousand ways so I get it projected through my computer. Uh, must be causing some interference as such. Um, so if I just go back to the Hereford system briefly, select that, and click on continue. We then bring up our uh, Hereford system again as such. Um, just some other the functionality it's got there is we've got our sale catalogs which I've shown you, we've got our semen catalogs, we've got our member lookup and we've got animal lookup. So basically they're just our search and sort functions that we've seen on Unit Solutions but allowing us to do it through this particular application. Um, something again I'd encourage you all to download onto your smartphones and utilise pretty easy technology to use, um, doesn't need many instructions, but if anyone has any questions, they can soon get in touch with us. Um, so that's about all I wanted to show on the In Solutions app, Gemma. Um, I might now hand back over to you to finish off any specific questions you may have in regards to the app or the In Solutions technology in general. Um, just one question for you, Christian. Do you think in yeah. the future that people will be able to submit um, performance through the app, so submitting things like weights or um, registering animals, etc. Yeah, I think I think at some stage that there will be some functionality built into. It may, it may not be exactly this app, but some app form of breeders being able to capture data through their their tablets or smartphones. Um, probably a good example of that would be if you're out in the paddock doing your carving records and you want to capture the animal tag and mother it up and um, do a birth weight and so on and, and just record that as you go, then that's probably some good functionality there. But um, this is obviously technology we're just, we're just currently developing um, in regards to how we interact with breed society systems. 
initially were set up for uh, viewing information, but I think down the track there will definitely be some functionality built into capture information, that's for sure. But it also does come back to how powerful the breed society, uh, the, the tablet devices and apps are, but uh, I think the sky's the limit there from what I understand, but I'm also not a programmer, I should say. Thanks, Gemma. Okay, thank you, Christian.